Welcome to Excel Magic Trick number 135. Hey, if you want to download this workbook and follow along, click on my YouTube channel, then click on my college website link, and you can download the workbook Magic Tricks 133 to 145. Hey, in this uh, 135 trick, we're going to see how to calculate or determine what the last row is for a data set. So here we'd want to re return 12, and the last column. So here we'd want to return column 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And here's the formula that we're going to use, equals max. And we're going to use the row function. Now I'm going to start off by just highlighting all the possible data. Let's say we could have A to E, and this is a dot .xls, so there's 65,536 rows, right? So we don't, we don't know how many rows we're going to use. Now if you were going to, if you knew how many the maximum was, for instance, you knew you were never going to go past here, but that was going to change from time to time, you could just highlight that. But we're going to start off by highlighting those columns there, are all everything between A to E. And I'm going to close parentheses and multiply, because we need to at multiply these rows times the uh, not blank. So we open parentheses and then A to E again close parentheses, and then the symbols for not, less than, greater than, and then the symbol for blank, double quote, double quote. So now notice what's going to happen here. It's going to have all the rows, every single one of them, all 65. So it'll have the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, all the way up to 65,000. And it's going to multiply it times all of the uh, cells that are not blank by, and that'll be trues and falses. So It'll tell us all of the rows. For instance, in the array, it'll be 1, 3, 5, 8, 12. But since we have the max, hit, max here, it'll take the max of that. Now I'm going to have to hold Control and Shift and then tap Enter, because this is an array formula. And sure enough, uh, that didn't work. What did we do wrong here? Did we forget a parentheses? Yes, we have the parentheses in the wrong place. So um, it needs to say all of those not blank. And then we put a closed parentheses on the end. So in essence, I'll control shift enter, and then I'll hit F2 here. So there it is. Well, I accidentally had the parentheses right here instead of right here. Control shift enter. Now I want to show you formula evaluator. Uh, formulas, formula auditing, evaluate formula in 2003. It's uh, tools, formula auditing, evaluate formula. The keyboard shortcut that works in all versions is Alt T U F, Alt Tough. Now I want to show you something here because there is a problem if you do A to E here. Click evaluate. Whoa! It has every single number. And if you pull this down, you can see, and then scroll up, it has all the way to 65,000. By the way, if you were to click this uh, little arrow right here, you could scroll through all of these values. That's just, that's too many. Now, with modern computers, they can zip through everything really quickly. So it maybe doesn't matter too much. But again, if you wanted to be sure, you could just do that, right? But if you were never going to have more than 100, then by all means, just highlight 100 cells. But there it is. It um, multiplies all those times the trues and falses for the ones not blank, and only the max is selected, which is 12. Now, I'm going to uh, scoop this formula out here, copy uh, up in the formula bar, highlight it, and then control C, and I'm going to hit escape because I don't want to wreck that because that's an array formula. Then I'm going to click on this cell, F2, control V, and I'm going to change this to column. Okay, and then control shift enter, and that'll tell us the column fifth. Now, if we delete this right here, what does it tell us? It should be three because that's the, the last one there. Now, again, uh, there's a lot of values here so you could reduce the amount of uh, memory used and time spent calculating the formula by changing those. Control Shift Enter. Now, why in the world would you ever want to do that? Well, perhaps you'd want to uh, make a, a formula using the offset function, and there's some notes over here, to define the range. So what we want now is we want the define range like that. But when we type something here, we then want the define range to be that. So let's go to uh, Name Manager in 2003, or, or uh, I'm sorry, Name Manager in 2007, or Define Names in 2003. We're going to use the keyboard shortcut Control F3. This says Name Manager set in 2007, in 2003 it says uh, Define Names, and we want a new one. And 
we're going to call this uh, range ex expand contract range. Then I'm going to come down here, pull this little edge here so we can see this formula a little bit better, equals offset, open parentheses, and where are we going to start? We're always going to start in A1. And how many do we want to move from A1? Up and down rows. Do we want to go up any? Well, we, can, I mean, we can't. We don't want to go down any? Well, no. We want to stay there, so I'm going to put 0. And then comma, how many columns? Do I want to move over this direction? Any columns, which is positive, or this one, which is minus? But no, we want to stay there, so we put a 0, comma. And then how tall is this? I'm going to click on this cell right here. And then comma, the last argument for offset is how wide is it? I'm going to click that one right there, close parentheses, and then click OK. Now, a little trick here. You can always tell, look at the range in um, that it's finding by clicking this right here. And sure enough, it got it. I'm going to click uh, Close. And then I'm going to change this. I'm going to put something right here. So, for, so now I'll Control F3. And now I'm going to click on Expand Range, this one right here, and then click right here. Sure enough, that works. So that's how to find the uh, last row, last column. And um, that's a trick I got from the Excel Hacks book. All right, uh, we'll see you next trick.